Okay, here is the Celtics uh, ESPN's Real Plus Minus. Uh, a look at their stats this year and then compared to last year and compared to other players who are no longer on the roster. So Kyrie Irving this year, Real Plus Minus 2.78 compared to last year when his was 2.05 and very close to Isaiah Thomas's last year. But this year, you can see the difference. Kyrie Irving, much better impact. Not much better, but distinctly better than what, than what uh, Isaiah Thomas gave us all of last year. Uh, so Kyrie Irving just needs to keep this up, okay? He could drop down. His defensive real plus minus in recent weeks has been on the downward trend. Before, it was pretty close to, to zero, and now it's starting to drop down. 1.5 as of right now, it was negative 2.3 for all of last season. So, you know, by the end of the year, it could very well be back down to 2.3, and maybe that's the level of defense he's playing now. And uh, But so he, after that great start, when Gordon Hayward went down, Kyrie Irving was all in on defense, as were the rest of the Celtics for a little while. And they were the best defense in the league at that time. And, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving was right there one, as one of them playing extremely good D. So that's why his impact overall is distinctly better than it was last year and what Isaiah Thomas was doing last year. So Isaiah Thomas both... Isaiah Thomas last year, his uh, offensive impact was just absolutely outstanding. Very much elite, you know, one of the top seven in the league or something like that. It's just that his defense was like literally the worst in the entire league. Kyrie Irving last year was just a slight step down, but a distinct step down offensively from Isaiah Thomas. And this year it's about the same as it was last year so. We can almost definitely, we can't definitely say, but we can, you know, Isaiah Thomas distinctly better offensively, but defensively is where the difference is made. And that's why the trade was made. You know, if it was just offense, then we would take Isaiah Thomas any day of the week. But between the energy, the, between the injury and the uh, defense of real plus, the defense just being so terrible, Kyrie Irving distinctly better overall player. And we are uh, reaping the rewards right now. Al Horford. Oh, boy. Okay, this is... This is last year. Al Horford this year, real plus minus, distinctly better than last year. Okay, dramatically. And he was 60th in the league last year in real plus minus. Right now, he's borderline MVP candidate level. He's not talked about in that discussion, and he certainly doesn't look like an MVP some nights, right? More like most nights. But because he makes such a rock-solid contribution defensively and offensively, not many players in the, in the NBA are better two-way players on both sides of the court. Overall players. Um, only six players are better right now uh, at making that two-way impact. So that's pretty amazing, and probably not very well understood or appreciated this year. You know, nobody's talking about Al Horford as a borderline MVP candidate, but that's what his cumulative two-way impact equals out to a uh, top 10 player, you know, seventh here. So uh, dramatic playing dramatically better. And uh, Kyrie Irving probably has a lot to do with that for whatever reason. He's got better synergy, energy, whatever, but you know, Al Horford, he came into the season in incredible shape, maybe even slimmed down a little bit, but he's also been playing power forward a lot more than he was able to last year, right? We never had an Aaron Baines last year, and uh, so I think that's got a lot to do with it, but the, the results, there they are. Jalen Brown dramatically improved from last year. Uh, his real plus minus was negative 3.37, which was one of the worst in the league last year. You know, that rookie... Offensively, negative 2.95, which is just absolutely terrible. And now it's uh, slightly in the positive overall, his offensive impact on the game. So that's the real dramatic improvement is offensively not turning the ball over as much, being a little more assured, 
Uh, he's even shooting a little bit better, kind of knows a little more what to do. There's still plenty of room for improvement, but he's at a great spot already, and he's already dramatically improved. And uh, defensively as well, from a negative player to a rock-solid positive defender. So in future years, if he gets his uh, offensive impact up a little more, you know, he can start he can start getting up there. Uh, and he doesn't have to be an offensive superstar to make a superstar-like impact like Al Horford is doing this year very quietly. But, uh, you know, Avery Bradley last year, his real he was a very much overrated player because as he took on a bigger offensive role, his defense fell off a cliff last year. You can you can compare it to the years previous, but we saw it with Kawhi Leonard. We've seen it with every most every off most every defensive stud who takes on a bigger offensive role. We immediately see their defensive impact go down, and we saw that with Avery Bradley last year. He's playing better defense this year for the Pistons but uh, last year it was nothing to write home about and his offensive impact you know when he's not hitting his shots he's not really giving you anything he's not getting to the free throw line he's not passing the ball well he's turning the ball over at a sky high rate both fumbling the dribble and bad passes and uh, that's why he's just he was and is an overrated player how overrated? Well, last year he was the 322nd best ESPN real plus minus. This year it's even slightly worse. So despite the big name and despite his ability to sometimes lock up uh, opposing point guards, his overall impact on the game because of his uh, streaky shooting and poor offensive feel, uh, he's just overrated. And so this last year from the shooting guard position starting Bradley gave us a negative 2.16 real plus minus Jalen Brown this year is uh, like three points better okay that's we're getting three point better improvement in uh, real plus minus from our starting shooting guard so dramatically better than Avery Bradley uh, you know people don't realize that yet they probably still think that Avery Bradley is better than Jalen Brown, or at the very worst, they're about the same. But the fact is, Jalen Brown dramatically better for this team uh, than Avery Bradley was last year or this year for Detroit. Uh, Jason Tatum, uh, very much an underrated player, 36th overall in real plus minus in the league, okay? However, Jay Crowder last year was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, a slightly better defender than Jason Tatum, and his offensive impact was more. So I think we've seen this uh, Jason Tatum's offensive impact improve in the last few weeks, and it's just going to keep getting better and better. Um, but he's got a little ways to go to catch up with uh, Jay Crowder in that regard. But as he, as he improves, his ranking will go up towards that top 20. And, of course, Jay Crowder this year is one of the worst in the league. Uh, didn't really work out all summer with his mother's death. Changing teams, adjusting to playing with uh, LeBron James, D-Wade, all that stuff. We know that. But last year, his impact, he might never touch that again or come close. But it was amazing last year. But uh, Jay T Jason Tatum is on his way towards matching that impact. Gordon Hayward was 29th in the league last year. So we see that Jason Tatum is already right on the heels of Gordon Hayward's impact, right, from last year. 36th in the league compared to 29th. So uh, Jason Tatum, a much better defender than Gordon Hayward. Okay, that's just, he's just doing it. He's much longer, and uh, he's just got better physical tools. And... Uh, He's also not carrying as much of a load offensively, so he's got more energy to spend on defense as well. Gordon Hayward, a much better offensive player last year than Jason Tatum is this year, but we see Jason Tatum rising in that direction, and he still probably won't end up getting this high, 3.14, that Gordon Hayward had last year, of course, but he's trending upwards, so not too far off offensively, but much, much better defensively overall cl 
close and getting closer. We'll leave it at that. Marcus Morris last year, he was 118th in real plus minus, so Jason Tatum already better than Marcus Morris has ever been. Aaron Baines, Kelly Olenek. I really wish we had Kelly Olenek on the team. He beat us right the other night with the Heat, lighting it up from three, and he was only it only took like ten million a year to sign him, so the Heat got a real deal in him. But Aaron Baines does fit a little bit better. Our team is playing a little bit better. Aaron Baines has a lot to do with it. And uh, so this year, Aaron Baines is playing slightly better offensively than last year, than he did last year, but slightly worse offensively. Um, but he's playing three more minutes a game. And, uh, you know, his, uh, his win share is going to be much better than it was last year because he's playing more minutes per game. But Kelly Olynyk um, significantly improved this year for the Heat than he was last year with better defense and uh, better offense as well. And he's also getting more minutes per game, but we don't have him, so there's that. Uh, Amir Johnson last year had a really good real plus minus, even though he was only able to do it for 20 minutes a game. But another super underrated guy, 21st in the league in real plus minus. But this year we've seen a big drop-off. So no big loss for Amir jo- losing Amir Johnson because uh, he's just a little over the hill and uh, his impact on the game is plummeting. Terry Rozier and Marcus Smart, let's look at real quick. Uh, this year, Terry Rozier has passed M- Marcus Smart in real plus minus, but he's playing uh, seven minutes a game less. So it's easier to play slightly better defense and better overall when you're only playing 20 minutes a game, 23 minutes a game. You don't have to pace yourself like uh, Marcus Smart probably has to do at 30 minutes a game. Uh, But Terry Rozier's defense slightly better and his offensive efficiency is slightly better. Um, And much improved from last year where Terry Rozier was negative one. This series positive 0.58. So 1.5 uh, point uh, improvement this year. Marcus Smart, however, uh, downgrade. Downgrade defensively and downgrade offensively. Not much of a fall off by any means. And he's given us tons of quality minutes, so whatever. But guys, that's just a quick look at, not so quick look at uh, some Celtics and their advanced stats this year compared to some of the guys they are replacing and their improvements from year to year. All right, guys, let me know what you think. I'll see you soon. Peace.